This is the plaintiff Juanisha Woodruff. She says the defendant sold her a car which had been in a major accident, lied to her when she discovered it, and she's here suing this crook for every penny of the $3,586.23 he swindled her out of. This is the defendant, Richard. He says he sold the plaintiff the car as is and doesn't owe her any money. He even repaired it a few times for her for free because he likes to make his customers happy. But this customer's impossible to deal with and just wants everything for free. He's accused of a misrepresentation. All parties, please raise your right hand. Be seated, come to order, please. Litigants have been sworn, Your Honor. Thank you, Douglas. You're welcome, Your Honor. Juanisha Woodruff. Yes. You are suing Richard Auto Sales Company. You don't want us to use your last Correct. name yes. or the name of the company yes. for three thousand five hundred and eighty-six dollars and twenty-three cents. That you say you are out between the twenty-seven hundred and change that you purchased for the car, towing fees, diagnostics, pain and suffering, and Uber rides. Yeah. Okay. What happened? On February eighteenth, I went into the defendant's establishment. And I was looking for an $1,800 car. At that moment, the defendant told me that he doesn't sell any car that cheap because he always has problems with it. He then pointed out the 2000 Ford Focus for $2,200. And he told me that I can give him a deposit of 18 and we'll work on everything else. So we looked at the car. He stated he didn't have the keys at the moment, so I couldn't turn on the car and run the car. He said he just got it on his lot. So we looked inside, I looked outside of the car. Um, at this point, I just really wanted a car, so. Even if it didn't run? Well, not that it didn't run, I was trusting the fact Why that. Why would you trust him? You knew him all your life? He's no. Your, he's your godfather? No. Okay. <laughs> but that, that. So why wouldn't you test, she, did you buy a car without test driving it? I did it. I mean, I did, sorry, yes. You really did? Yes, I really did. I guess I it was... goes without saying you didn't have a mechanic look at the car. Exactly. And I you was... bought a car that was as is? Yes, it was okay. as is. And you know why? I'm here because he fraudulently sold me this vehicle. How so? He knew it was a damaged vehicle. How was it damaged? Before I got the car, it was in a rear end accident. Okay. The car went through a pole, well, went through a fence and almost went into a house. Okay. where it had front end damage to it, where a pole went through the engine, and that's what stopped her car from going into the house. This was How did you figure this out? Because the defendant never cleaned out the trunk of my vehicle. So when I went grocery shopping, I went to put the groceries inside of the trunk and realized there were still school books in my trunk. When I looked through the school books, it happened to be a girl that I went to school with. Okay. <laughs> so I found her on Facebook. I messaged her. Okay. When she finally did respond to me, um, she was able to give me everything and tell me all the details, meaning Was he she told, the one who had sold him the car? <laughs> he told the car from the accident she had and tried to charge her $800 to get the vehicle after telling her it was totaled. Go and Meaning because she never picked up the vehicle? Yes, yeah, she, she left it there? Once it got towed, I guess she never picked it up. Oh, I don't know if it was fees. fees. Yeah, yeah, I don't know if it was fees or what. Yeah, those by are storage time. fees. Okay. And, and at that point, he told there would be a lot of money to get it fixed. So I guess she signed over the title to him, left him the car. For, and when did she do that? She did that in 2015. The accident happened, I want to say, 4th of July, she said. Of 2015? Of 2015, yes. And then in February of 2016, you buy it for $2,200? Yes. Okay. And when you say he fraudulently sold it to you, did you ever ask him whether the Plenty car had times. been... Plenty of times. Did you do a Carfax? Yes. Had you done a Carfax before you bought it? You no, didn't test drive it before you bought it. Yeah, I'm pretty sure VIN. you didn't do a Carfax. Uh, yeah, right. I didn't have the VIN number at okay. that time. Okay. You don't know enough at that point. Yeah, not for yeah, that. You learned all that stuff. Like, yeah, not for that. All right, Richard, <laughs> what's going on? Well, what's going on is I sold this lady a car as is, no warranty. What'd you tell her about accident? I don't know anything about the accident. I don't know the Did history of the car. Did you tow the car from the accident scene? It wasn't from an accident. I'm on city towing. Okay. And the police department called me because it was an unregistered motor vehicle. Where? In, in the city. Parked in a parking space on the street? I guess a moving violation. I don't know why. All I know is that they call me to tow a car, I tow it. Had it been in a car accident in the spot when you came no. over to uh, tow Not it? Not to my knowledge, no. 
So did, w what did you say to her when she asked you about the uh, whether the car had been in an accident? Well, she never asked me that, nor did I ever speak to the previous owner. So I really didn't know the history of the vehicle. Was the car signed over to you by the lady who owed all those storage no. fees? No. I towed it per order to the police, and then when nobody picks up the car within 30 days, I have to file proper paperwork. They send me a form which allows me to sell the vehicle. So she purchases the car, and do you finance? Yes, I do. The remainder, and do you have an affidavit from that from that lady? I have that. I have. Now, may I see the, the affidavit? No, no. Oh, okay. police report what of the accident? Of the accident. Yeah, let me see that. Told from, see and then he said it was unregistered. I I have her registration when she brought her 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 license plate to motor vehicle and to cut off her registration when she turned in her um, her license plate. Okay. So it was registered during this time. Oh, let me see. Thank you. Where's the car now? Right now it's stuck on my, in my lot because it won't turn on. It doesn't say a word about unregistered anything. This says that you towed it from an accident. Mm -hmm. could, the initial reason could be it was unregistered. Oh, there's no evidence that there's any. Well, irregardless. Uh, irregardless isn't a word, but I still like people to tell me the truth, you know? Let's talk about what ends up happening. You end up having problems with the car. Yes. Okay. Is that why you called whoever the owner was, or you had called just to return the books? No, or what? I drove the car off the lot on the 26th. By the second, I was having problems. By the time I went to him, I realized it was going to be an issue. So that's what made me dig deeper into this. Are you about to cry? Probably. Why? I get emotional. Okay. But because it's a car. A car though, that you bought without test driving. Right. Okay, but these are life though, lessons. This isn't cancer. No, okay. totally agree. That's okay. just how I am. Okay, go but ahead. I kept my word with him, and I felt like he should have did the same, and that's why it hurts me as much. What was wrong with the car? It was, um... What was, oh, let me ask him. What was wrong with the car? Well, I have the list from the beginning. The first item is, she said, the muffler. It was just a rattle, so we addressed that issue, and we fixed it. The second item was an ignition cylinder. It was stuck. Uh, she said it needed spark plugs. We disagreed. However, we put in brand new spark plugs. She said it needed coolant. We checked. The coolant was filled. She complained about the brakes. We put brand new brakes on it. She complained about the tie rods. Tie rods were fine. They were nice and tight. And in her opinion, it needed an air filter. We put a new one in. And she said the battery terminals were corroded. We put brand new ones in. Okay, now you, you had sold this car as is, so why were you doing all that? To please the customer. Okay, so you know that you bought the car as is, which yes. means that you have no, no recourse unless there's fraud. Yes. But when you took it to him, you, he was fixing all this <laughs> stuff for you. You know that didn't have to happen. No, I know, because I contacted the Better Business Bureau, and they told me if he's working with me to continue let him work with me, don't put in a complaint. So that's why I continue to let him work with me, because they explained Until to me. what? What possessed you to put the complaint? I owed him $100 when I called them up and explained to him that the car is not moving from my spot. He told me he can't do nothing for me. He can't help me. Okay. Which is, of course, what your warranty is. Zero. Yeah, which I understand. Okay. And, but so you're nearing the end of your payment schedule. And yeah. what happens? And that's when he decides he doesn't want to do anything. He kept hanging up the phone. He didn't want to talk to me at this point. So we went down there. We're going back and forth about what's going on with the vehicle. And I'm explaining to him how he fraudulently sold me a car that he knew was damaged and knew wasn't going to take me from A to B. By the time I turned around, he's, he picked up the phone like three different times, told me he was calling the cops for me to get out his establishment, his um, receptionist was, I guess, they decided they were signing over everything to me. So what happens at that table? By the time I walk up, by the time we turn around, I walk out, I have everything paid in full, and I... Wait, and I don't know what me, you're saying. After everything, he was like, well, why am I doing this? Why am I doing Did that? Did she sign a waiver? Whole harmless agreement. Give yeah. me that. That's what this smelled like to me. That's why I wanted to know. Did you sign yeah. something saying I'm not going to sue him here? No. I'm settling for the hundred dollars, the hundred and thirty-eight, and not having to make that last payment. No. At all? When Did I, you sign anything? What am I yeah, about to? Yeah. When look? I signed that form, this was before everything, and then I signed it and I read it and I told him that I don't agree with this, and he was like, "Well, if you don't agree with this, you don't get anything." And I have. I'm sorry. All my... I'm sorry. Welcome back to the People's Court, Harvey Levin here. So, uh, is she stuck with this car? Yes, she is. Why? She bought it as is condition. Yeah, but she says, I didn't know it was in an accident. 
She bought the car. It's up to her to do her own due diligence. She can find information on that car. Did he have a duty to tell her it was in an accident before? I don't think so. So she's stuck? Carfax. Huh? Carfax. Okay, but she didn't. Is she stuck? Yes. Okay. Going inside the courtroom. For the rest of mere mortals, when we sign something, it means something. I'm supposed to decide that you're too emotional to know what you signed. No, you I signed? realized what it was after the fact, and that's let's what see what it says. For payment forth. received from the auto sales company in the amount of hundred dollars for signing this agreement, I agree to release, indemnify, and hold harmless the auto sales company as well as their employees, agents, representatives, assessors, etc., from all losses, claims, thefts demands, liability, causes of action, expenses, known or unknown, arising from the sale of the following vehicle. I hereby acknowledge a car is paying full with no further debt. What about this was confusing? Or no, you should not be held, because you know what this means, right? What is this supposed to mean? That he doesn't, he That you settled, held. that you settled. This very clearly says that in return for $100, <coughs> and we both know that you also got to not pay the last payment, that you said, okay, I'll walk away. See, you want to sue on an original contract, and now I'm learning that you supersede that contract with a settlement. That was signed when, when I realized that he didn't have my title. And I was like, how do you not have a title when you should have been had the title? Because now this is already 60 days. So how do you not have the title? Do you ever have a title in your name, or was this title jumped? Oh, I, no. I don't jump titles. That's against the law. Right. So right, I'm so, trying, but I, she, okay. she says, I've never had a title. I've had the car now for three months, and I still don't have the title at the okay. time of litigation. That would be a concern of mine. So yes. how do I know that you did what you needed to do in order to get the title? A registration could not be submitted unless a title or something in lieu of a title is submitted to motor. There you okay. go. And let me just explain something. Is that, is that what you're talking about? Yeah. Okay. And let me further And explain. it's in her name. Okay, we're done. Okay. Here's what's happening. Ms. Woodruff, you settled a case, and when people settle a case, the public policy of our land is to encourage people to not be litigious and come to court. Encourage them to work out their own problems, because it's always cheaper, better, faster for the people. So when you work out a problem, there's a consequence. You can't say, oh, but then all this other stuff happened later. The only thing that could possibly, quote, have happened later is that you thought that you would magically get a title in your hands in that very second, and that no. didn't happen. No, but you're Stop trying... talking. But you're entitled to have a title. What we're going to do is we're going to request to have it done quicker. If, in the event, you do not have a title in your name in three weeks, I will revisit my ruling. Mm. But so long as you do, then what is happening is exactly what you bargained for. So pending the, the qualification that I just made, my verdict in this case is for the defendant. Thank you. So Ms. Woodruff, who was seeking more than $3,500 here in court, has failed to prove her case. You know, I think everybody feels sorry for you. I mean, yeah. really. And I know you were really emotionally it's okay. upset. I'm pretty sure he's not going to give me my title in three weeks, so we will be right, right back here. Well, we'll find out. Well, okay. We will. But what about the car? You still have the car. It's, it's still, not running. It's not running. And what are you going to do with it? It's going to cost me $1,200 to fix it. So um, I don't know. Maybe I can give it to him and see who he sells it to next. Listen, good luck. Thank you. Sorry you had the problems, Thank okay? You. Now, here comes Richard, the defendant. How do you, if you'll step over here, Richard, you brought a witness with you. We didn't even hear from him. How do you feel about that? I must say, you know, a lot of people looking, think, you know, you look kind of cold in there. I don't know. Do you feel sorry for her at all, or are you just thoroughly irritated with her? Irritated her, your hair? her complaint was totally unjustified. It was? We had an agreement. She signed a whole harmless agreement in lieu no of her question. paying me. I gave her credit for that, plus I gave her money. Well, it's one of those situations. Sorry I had to go through this. I feel sorry for both of you. You know? It's a shame. Okay. okay. That's business. You must sign some documents, sir. Sure. Harvey, how do you feel about this? A lot of car dealers have problems like this. What do you think? Okay, Doug, a couple of things. One, you do not get a second bite of the apple once you sign a release. And secondly, uh, the defendant did send the plaintiff title, so case closed. That will do it for this case. Litigants for the next case on the way into the courtroom right now.